Weeding through a moonlit pond, talking to frogs make Michael Mahoney feel like a kid again. The 70-year-old biology professor and conservationist at the University of Newcastle in Australia's New South Wales has mastered imitating and understanding the numerous shrills, crocs and whistles of frogs to locate them in the wild and he gets a thrill every time they call back. But the amphibian expert fears these same frogs are now more at risk of going quiet. Australia has about 240 species of frog, but around 30% of them are threatened in a variety of ways. Climate change, water pollution, habitat loss and the quiet shrift fungus. According to Mahoney, globally, frogs are the most threatened of all vertebrates. They're telling us that there's something wrong with our environment when, a fro when an animal that's been around for so long and is so resilient is all of a sudden dropping out. So they live in water, we drink water. We use water, they live in water. If they are dying, then we need to be looking at our habitats and asking what is wrong. Um, so they are a canary in the mine. They're telling us that we are not looking after this planet very well. In my lifetime, uh, I've seen seven Australian frogs go extinct that I, I have seen myself and that no longer exist. I have really probably the saddest part of my career is that um, as a young uh, person, uh, not much more than finishing uh, being a student, I discovered a frog and within two years of it being discovered that frog um, uh, went extinct and so very early in my career I became aware of just how vulnerable some of our frogs were. When we don't hear the sounds of nature we know something is wrong in our environment and that, that would be an incredibly sad event. Oh he doesn't like it, he's giving us a bit of his warning call. Beyond working to preserve their habitat across Australia, Mahoney has helped to develop cryopreservation method to help bring frogs back from the edge of extinction by banking genetic material. At heart we are about saving animals in nature but we also recognize when things become really bad we have to take an insurance policy and the insurance policy is to store their genome for the future. I mean we test to make sure that sperm that we collect can fertilize eggs and that they maintain their fertility um, as a proof of concept. And so in Australia what we've done in the face of the problems of a catastrophic loss of species is to establish the first genome bank for Australian frogs. Over the span of his career Mahoney has described 15 new species of frogs but has seen first-hand species being wiped out. So we collect the genetic diversity of this individual and we can cryo-store it and we can use that any time in the future, 10 years time, 20, 50 years time, to bring back the genes that are in this animal now and we may need that in a captive breeding situation to increase genetic diversity that gets lost. He also contributed with other scientists to a study by the Worldwide Fund for Nature that found nearly 3 billion Australian animals were killed or displaced by bushfires in 2019 and 2022, including 15 million frogs. Mihani's passion for conservation has dropped off on his students, with one of his previous pupils, Dr. Simon Clulo, naming a newly discovered frog in 2016 in his honour, Mihani's toddler. One of his current students say his method is humorous but worthwhile. I have been into frogs from an early age but I've never been into yelling at them to find where they are so that's kind of a niche thing which is really quite funny and humorous at the same time but it definitely does work so it does pay off especially when you're trying to find some of these species that are really sort of amongst the undergrowth and they're not really obvious. I always get a thrill when you call back and sometimes we forget to work because you know, just like to talk to the frogs for a while and it's sort of good fun and 